who dare hold back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, turn up and dance with me. Hello, everybody. My name is Warren Isaac Bear from Bear Science Lab. Today, we're covering A64B unification. And what uh, does unification mean in this context? Well, it's how gravity unify the uh, rules of the bodies of Earth and the bodies of the heavens. And speaking of gravity, my father's so fat that he's created his own gravitational field. I can feel the attraction right now. I don't know, you move your ears. I gave you two of them for a reason. Uh, I'm just kidding. You used to. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is One Isaac Bear from Bear Science Lab. And today, what we're going to do is some graph. So, Gravity all started with a man named Gigi. Who's Gigi? Galileo Galilei. And he correctly hypothesized that if you have an apple... Okay, okay, I'll start from Newton. All right, so gravity all started with Sir Isaac Newton, who hypothesized that... The force of gravity between two objects is, and this is a real soccer, mg. Now, what does this mean? Well, this was mind-blowing because gravity is defined by Newton as the attraction between the centers of two bodies. So here we have the attraction between the center of the apple. Yes, trust me, that's an apple, not just an English ball. And the earth. And this unified the laws of the earth and the laws of the heavens. Be because people used to look at the night sky and think, how do these elegant bodies of the heavens work? They did not understand uh, the physics of what was going on up there, only what was going on down here. So Newton, however, with this law, and not just this law, this law is for earth, but with this law, FG equals G, big M, little m, over R squared. And that's why this is called the universal law of gravitation. With this law, he completely explained all of the orbits, uh, like the orbit that the moon did around the Earth, how the Earth orbited the sun, with this one equation, he could predict where any astronomical body would be at any time, which was mind-blowing at the time of the 1680s, because this was a revolution. No one understood what was going on up there, but Newton had found a solution to that. So now, let's give an example of this attraction between the centers of two bodies with an apple. What is the apple's attraction to Earth? Let's say this apple is uh, 80 grams or 0.08 kilograms. So now, assuming that G uh, or the gravitational constant on Earth is about 10, let's just say it's 10, not 9.8, uh, then what is the force uh, of gravity exerted by the apple on Earth and the force of gravity exerted by Earth on the apple? Well, the thing is, they have to be the same. So now, you might be thinking, if they are the same, then why doesn't the Earth, like, fall towards the apple? Why does the Earth not move when the apple falls towards it? Well, the reality is, it does move, but only a really tiny bit. Because even though the force on them is the same, the masses of them are not. The mass of the apple is significantly smaller than the mass of the Earth. And since acceleration is F over M, that means that the acceleration of the apple is much bigger than the acceleration of the Earth. All right, enough blibber blab. What is the force of the apple on the Earth? Well, to find that, we have to find the force of the Earth on the apple which would be, well, Fg is Mg. So that's 0.08 kilograms 
times our g is approximately 10. So that gives us 0 0.8 newtons. So that means that the force that the Earth exerts on the apple is 0.8 newtons. What about the force the apple exerts on the Earth? Well, it's also 0.8 newtons. How do we know? Well, let's not use this gravitational equation, but rather the gravitational equation Fg is gm, or big M, little m, over r squared. If you don't understand what big M or little m mean, this is the bigger mass, and this is the smaller mass. Hopefully that was obvious though. So, if we even, so, that means that Fg, no matter the placement of the objects, will be the same for this two uh, body system. So, I mean, we have G times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the object over the distance squared. So, 6.4 uh, times 10 to the 6th squared. And, if this wasn't clear what R meant, R is not the distance from surface to surface. No, no, no. R is the distance from one center to the other center. And the thing is, in comparison to the Earth, the apple's radius is basically negligible. So we can just use the radius of the Earth as the distance between the two objects. So, now obviously this isn't to scale by the way. Otherwise that would be a massive apple. So this, no matter what, and g, by the way, for reference, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. This, no matter what, will equal to 0.8. And if we flip it the other way, remember your arithmetic. Remember your arithmetic. Uh, oh, shoot. That's a 0 0.08 kilogram. Sorry. Remember your arithmetic, kids. Multiplication has the commutative property. So no matter which way you swap it, this is always going to be 0.8. Or uh, something a little smaller than that, because g, not exactly 10, g is less than 10, and actually 9.8. So now, how can we find g using this equation? Well, let's try doing exactly that. But first, but first, let's show how this not only applies to bodies on the Earth, but also bodies on the heavens. Now, let's see how we can unite the, uh, the rules of the bodies of the Earth and the bodies of the heavens. So let's assume we have our Earth here, no? And now we have our tiny little apple, and this is still a massive apple, probably the size of a city or two. And then, let's say we have the moon over here. And the moon is considered to be a heavenly body because it's in space, 384 million kilometers, uh, meters away. Now, obviously, if I drew this to scale, then the moon would go way off the whiteboard. But for our purposes, this is how it's going to look like. This is just a reminder that this is only 6,400 kilometers. So, Let's think about it. And by the way, remember that this is basically negligible. And I know all of you are talking about, hey, didn't you say it was the distance between the centers of bodies? Well, yes, I guess you could take the Earth's radius into account, but it is really small compared to the distance between the Earth's surface and the Moon's surface. In fact, it's so, so small that you could fit every single planet in that space between the Earth and the Moon. But, it still sort of makes a difference, so we'll talk about that one later though. So what about this apple, for starters? Well, now let's try and find the acceleration of this apple. So we get Fg is G big M little m over R squared. And we're trying to look for our gravitational acceleration. So we would be solving for g here. So we get little mg is equal to g big m little m over r squared. 
might be questioning why the little m and little mg. Well, that's because you don't use the mass of the Earth when calculating the gravitational attraction of an object to Earth. You use the mass of the object. So that's why we have the little m here. So now we have just uh, g is equal to big G, a big M over R squared. And we know our R is just our 6,400 kilometers, or 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. Uh, no, we're not going to put a circle around it. We're going to put some parentheses around it and square it. So we have our G on the top, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times our M, which is, we'll just say it's 6, even though it's actually 5.98, times 10 to the 24th. And now we have R, and or actually R squared, which is 6.4 times 10 to the 6th meters squared. And if it wasn't clear, I'm using meters, not kilometers. That's why uh, this 6,400 is different from this, 6.4 million. All right, so what? Why are you not using as a unit? No, I'm using meters. Oh yeah, 6.37, yeah, that's right. All right, so now that gives us a total of, what is our G? Well, solving for this gives us 0.977 times 10 to the first power. How do we get to the first power? Well, let's do some exponential analysis, I guess you could call it. This is 10 to the minus 11th. This is 10 to the 24th. And this is 10 to the 6th. But we squared it, so that becomes 10 to the 12th. What the hell are you doing? 10 to the 12th. So that just gives us 0 0.977 this times 10. Which is 9.77 meters per second squared. Close to 9.8 meters per second squared, but we didn't use exact numbers. So that's why it's that uh, a little less than the actual uh, value. So that was a pretty close estimate. But now let's try and find how much the moon is accelerating. So uh, if we wanted to find the moon's acceleration, g is equal to gm over r squared. All right, so we're going to use g equals gm over r squared again. And if you didn't know, the distance between uh, from surface to surface, moon to Earth, is 384,000 kilometers, which when converted to meters, is 3.84 uh, times 10 to the 8 meters. Uh, let's express that in scientific notation. All right, so now... We have g and gm over r squared, so we have 6.67, and we'll leave the uh, times 10 to, uh, to the something at the end over here. So we have 6.67 times 6 from the 6 times 10 to the 24th over r squared, 3.84 squared, times 10 to the what? Well, times 10 to the, this would have been minus 11, this would have been plus 24, and this would have been 10 to the 8th squared 10 to the 16th. Oh, wow. So we get, uh, from all of this, we will actually get 0 0.002725. Or, in other words, 2.72 times 10 to the negative third power. And... Uh, for all of you saying that uh, we should take this into account, that doesn't really make a difference because taking the Earth's radius into account, we get about 0.0026, which is barely even a difference. But I guess it does kind of become a little more visible in the scientific notation. Still, though, a, d a difference of one ten thousand isn't going to uh, do anything big. So we see that the bodies of the Earth and the bodies of the heavens follow the same. You, you, there is something deeply wrong with that dance. We see that the bodies of the Earth and the bodies of the heavens follow the same rules. And this is the unification that I was talking about. 
Gravity shows us that the bodies of the heavens obey the same rules of the bodies uh, of the earth. And we said keep one thing in mind, Fg is G big M little m over R squared. There is a gravitational attraction between every object and gravity is simply the force between two objects of the center of two objects that is attracting them together. In fact, the Earth gets attracted by uh, objects. However, it doesn't really accelerate the Earth because if you think about it, force over mass is acceleration. The mass of the Earth, 6 times 10 to the 24th, is so massive that any sort of gravitational force, Fg, isn't going to make a dent in that number. So, that's it for today. Thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, don't you dare hold that. Just keep your eyes on. Saborno Isaac Bari, who is known as the God of Mathematics, became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.